goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it, uh, uh, Lewis, Lewis, in just a moment here, uh, from Saturday Night Live, Michael Che is gonna be out here in che. just a moment. Yeah. Very funny young man. <laughs> briefly from The Daily Show, actually. Also, briefly from The Daily Show. People forget that. And former uh, Supreme uh, Allied Commander of NATO, Admiral James Stavridis, is gonna be out here in just a moment. We'll talk about what's yeah. going on in Europe right now. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting one-two punch. For guests, but I understand you have a special guest joining the band tonight. I I please introduce your friend. Oh my gosh, we've got Tivon Pennicott on the tenor saxophone. <laughs> Tivon, thank you for being here. <laughs> Folks, I love space. Fun fact, it's where my planet is. <laughs> and I also love telling all of you people about the latest off Earth developments in my long running segment Space News. Sat. First up on Space News, Billionaires in Space! <laughs> Last month, this gaggle of billionaires paid to go to the International Space Station, but apparently the billionaires weren't expecting to work so hard on the ISS. Oh, these clowns. I would love to have been there for the moment that dawned on them. Yeah, hi. Um, I specifically requested a noise-canceling helmet. What's that? What do you want me to do? Hose out the poop tube? <laughs> that was not in the brochure. <laughs> now, keep in mind, we already have billionaires who are so billioned up that they own their own space programs, while these guys had to pay $55 million for a seat on a shuttle. So now it's official. We now have space coach class. Perfect for anyone who thought, I love being in a crowded cabin with no leg room, but I wish when I barfed it would float around my head. <laughs> so what was the specific space work the billionaires had to do? It was experiments on hollow portation, human cells, and high precision optical lenses, but being that it was their first time in space and that they are neither professional astronauts nor researchers, some of the experiments ended up taking quite a lot longer than anticipated. <laughs> Well, yeah, qualifications come in handy. That's why you never get in the dentist chair and hear, hi, I'll be extracting one of those big chompy ones today, but I've never been to tooth school or whatever. I paid 20 grand to play with the drill. Now, let me stab your mouth with this drug dart. <laughs> Next up. Doorway on Mars News. You heard right. NASA's Curiosity rover spotted what appears to be a doorway on Mars, and here's what it looks like. Amazing! Wait a second, Jimmy, can we zoom in on that? A Val pack! They're relentless! <laughs> now, this looks very mysterious and exciting, but NASA warns that though it looks like the entrance to an alien tomb, mission scientists say it's a natural feature. Come on, don't just dismiss it out of hand. Aren't you even a little tomb curious? This Mars door could be the final resting place of the careers of whoever made John Carter. <laughs> Next, really, really big fans of John Carter. <laughs> really, you all are in this theater tonight. <laughs> Next up, space sex. The term space probe is about to get new meaning because scientists say we really have to talk about boning in space. Because in space, everyone can hear you scream. If you're doing it right. <laughs> according, according to experts, we should be embracing space sexology as a new discipline of study. Because if we ever want to become interplanetary, we should know how to boink in microgravity, or if it's even possible. Because having sex in microgravity is hard, especially finding the zero G spot. <laughs> you guys are taking the space news pretty hard tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next up, space shopping. A new company named Inversion is building Earth-orbiting capsules to deliver goods anywhere in the world from outer space. Here's a prototype of said capsule. Amazing! 
That's the kind of highly advanced delivery technology usually reserved for room service chicken fingers. <laughs> and there could be a medical application. The company's founders imagine the capsules could store artificial organs that are delivered to an operating room, which sounds great until you learn the capsule would deploy a parachute and land within a radius of tens of miles <laughs> from its target location. Doctor, he's flatlining. Don't worry, nurse. The new heart just touched down within tens of miles. Help me drag this guy into an Uber. We'll be right back with Michael Che.